Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Embossing folders rock my world. These 3D folders make such an impression See what I did there? On any paper crafting project, it's a really great way to add texture and design without really doing anything other than running it through a die cut machine. I've got a couple tags and a card project to share with you today that I'm really excited about. Dry embossing for me is a really fun way to create some more fun for your paper crafting. You can use stencils for dry embossing too, but in this video, we're just focusing on 3D folders. Those projects are coming up Next. It's an embossing folder orama today. I have got some brand new embossing folders from Simon Says Stamp. These are all pretty wintry, you know, holly, holly branch, uh, swirling snowflakes. I've got Snowflake, I think that stands for visions. I don't even know when I label these, what I call them. And delicate pine. I think embossing folders are such a fantastic crafty tool, whether you're making cards or tags, and I wanna make some tags today, and then we'll see what else shakes out. So let's get started and let's, let's make some fun tags. Starting out today using some of the Simon Says Stamp matte gold cardstock, and it's interesting that it's called matte. I mean, it is matte, but it's also quite reflective. That friend, and I'll do two. Let's do two, because we're gonna get two different looks. Put it at an angle like that because it's easier on your machine if you don't just put a straight, flat, hard surface through. I have recently learned that, and now this is, well, this is what I do. Pressing that down. All right, nothing shifted. Let's cut some tags. I now have two tags cut and ready to rock and roll. When I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6, the sandwich that I use is I take the plates out, okay? I take a metal adapter plate. This is just a basic adapter plate. And I take the folder and let's see here. I want this, let's see which is the one that pushes up. You know, one side is bumpy and one side recedes. So usually I put my labels on once I get them so that I know which is which. And all I'm going to do here is place this oh, right, well, though, right where there will be pattern. I'm, I'm not gonna wet this down or anything because I have had such good luck with these folders and this cardstock. But speaking of cardstock, I'm going to use one little shim to help this add a little more pressure. And I just grab whatever cardstock I have from my stash, get it lined up, and let's run it through. Come back. It will curl that cardstock, but honestly, it's no big deal, right? Come back here and wait until you see the texture. And I'll set this aside to use it again. And when we open this up, oh my goodness gracious, come here, look at that. Look at that texture. What? It's like so cool. Mmm, that looks amazing. All right, gonna take this friend, set it aside. Well, let's take the delicate pine. Delicate pine, okay, and again, we're gonna go here, just pop it in so the pine needles are coming through. And let's see, you can see how, how it's gonna look just by, you know, holding it up like that. All right, let's pop this on, put our cardstock all right, back on the top. And you can, if you have 3D embossing folders, you can definitely test it out with or without. I mean, I find it will work both ways, but sometimes I get a deeper emboss when I add the cardstock. So let's see what that looks like. Oh my goodness gracious. <gasps> Look at that. I mean, it looks, it just, it looks like it's been gold stamped and that is how you make two really quick tags with this gold paper and embossing folders. Isn't that fun? I'm gonna take this pack of sentiment strips. These are just the pre-printed sentiment strips. And I think what I will do is I will just cut these out and then cut them apart and you'll see how it'll look on my tag. So let me get out my sentiment labels. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. 
This is probably one, next to my uh, A2 layers dies, this is probably one of my most used sets in the craft slash dining room. Which one is thinner, this one? Because it helps me to quickly cut out, I might be able to come down one, perfectly trimmed sentiment strips. How about that? Oh yeah, that'll work. Without having to do much, you know what I mean? Without having to line anything up, and the beautiful thing is when you cut them, it's not gonna harm the other greetings. So I'm gonna tape these into place. Look about, just make sure it's centered. Put one there and one on the other side. Make sure it hasn't shifted. I just kind of look at the capital letters and if I have the capital letter spacing good, then I figure, well, although you have to watch out for the uh, A senders and the D senders, right? The part that dips below the line. Let's grab my die cut machine. All right, I've got my sentiment strip lined up here. I'm going to cut this one out. Happy holidays. And I'm also going to cut out season's greetings as well. So we'll take, see, see this one? Totally fine, right? Can go right back in the pocket. Nothing's sticking, nothing's tearing. Take that off, take that off. Oh, how cute is that? So there's my little happy holidays. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut out season's greetings as well. So now that I have them cut out, I have to show you this little tiny Tim Holtz tonic guillotine trimmer. How cute is this little guy? Now for someone like me who films a lot of videos and I always have to bring over my big old uh, tonic trimmer, I have the full size one and I have the medium size one. And true story, I don't use the medium size one. I use the full size one and oftentimes I just have to pick it up from where I keep it and bring it over here for videos. This little friend, if you're creating on the go, it unhooks, right? Go like this and oh my gosh, I'm so excited because what I do with these is I always line up the letters right here. And here I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the split. So this little friend, right, lines right up here. In fact, let's zoom in just a little bit so you can see that. Let's come in here. This is how I love to trim my sentiment strips or anything. So we're gonna press that down. I'm gonna hold this and just use our little cut for a perfect cut. Isn't that cute? Repeat for the other side again. Line up that letter with the line, make sure it's pressed, hold down both of the finger guards and cut. And that way I have a perfect greeting from side to side. But the size is so cute. I've never had a mini trimmer. Bravo, Tim. It's an awesome, adorable little trimmer. So now that I have these trimmed, I'm going to cut them down even further, all right? So let's say we're gonna, we're gonna take a little more off now, and here's why. I'm gonna get even closer to the edge, okay? So that's for the basic, but I need to cut these down because they're not gonna fit on the tag. So I'm gonna trim closer to each side, right? And you can see right there with the guard, cut. And now I'm gonna try to split that difference right between happy and holidays so that it will look as good as it can look and cut. That way I have two all ready to go. I just cannot do this freehand. You know what I'm saying? Like I freehand cutting is just not really my thing. I appreciate people who can do it. See, I can get as I can get nice and close there. Cut. But it's just not, it's not really in my wheelhouse. And every time I cut with scissors, you know, let's get a little closer there. I swear to you, I <laughs> I cut crooked and I mess it up. But here, this is giving me this perfect precision. And look at that, get right in there. Hold it down, cut. Perfect little cuts. Ah, oh, that is just so cute. Season's greetings and happy holidays. Now I'm gonna grab my, this is my Copic T10 marker. And I always do this with the sentiment strips because they are printed on white cardstock. And if you don't like that edge, you can just draw over the edge with a marker so that it looks like it's black. I've had a couple people ask me, well, Kathy, why, why don't they just print the white greetings on black cardstock? 
And you may not know this, but that's not actually possible at this time in the print world because there is no white opaque ink that would work. So what a reverse is, it is the absence of color and that is how you get that crispness. Now the cool thing is these sentiment strips are also foilable. So if you have a mink or laminator or some sort of foiling system, you can use like deco foil or any other type of foil that will that is heat reactive will work with these. As long as you have enough heat and pressure, you can change the color to whatever foil color you have. I actually recently did that in another video with more tags. And so I will totally put a link right up here for you if you wanna check out that video. When the holidays come around, I'm just very into tags. I think it's a fun, crafty way to use your supplies and your tools just to make something fun above and beyond making card projects. So to finish these tags, all you would do is take a little, well, let's see here, I'm gonna trim this off. I always cut my Doris strips to size and if I just take the smallest size here and go like that, I'll just cut one, two, three, four. Yeah, that'll work. And just pop them onto the back, right, for a little fun dimension. Pop you. Oh, I was a little off there, wasn't I? Hold on. Let's see if I can fix that. Just a snippet like that. Good. Okay. So that way I have a strong, let's put it right side up, adhesive on each one. You know, you could just do like a little happy at an angle, right? Take the holidays. Look at me going wonky. That is, that is so unlike me, but isn't that cute? Happy holidays, seasons. Well, maybe we do go seasons greetings at the same angle. You know what? That, we're gonna do that. You know, sometimes I just go wild and sometimes I don't. Now, here's a couple options for you. I have some, what is this? This is DMC metallic thread, right? And I like this because it's pretty neutral. And usually what I'll do, I'll show you this, I'll just cut a little length and I will either double it or sometimes even triple it. I'll show you that because, let's see, let's cut you at one end. Because it's very thin. One of the things that's on my list for the holidays this year, and I hope I get to do it, is to get some really nice, cutting it again, gold twine of some kind because I, I'm i feeling like there's gonna be a lot of gold in my life this, this, this holiday season. So here's what I do. Okay, now open it up. Did I do it? Oh, I did, see that? So now we're just gonna get a little more uh, flavor and flair. Now this would have to be, you know, longer if you want it to be longer, but isn't that cute just to have a little flouncy little tagger that you could take, you know, even something like this, that's a broader ribbon, right? Push it through and oh, can we pull it? I don't want to, I don't want to tear my little hole here. <laughs> Ribbons, not really my, my forte, but look at me, look at that. We tighten it down. Come on, keep going. Keep going. Oh, look at that. And then, of course, now let's see here. Let me tighten it up a little more. Then you'd have a cute little gold ribbon like that. Aren't those fun? So just, you know, little taggers. I think I would probably cut this. And you know what? It's my Tim Holtz. These are so good for trimming uh, ribbon and flouncy things. But that those are my two tags made with embossing folders. So that's embossing fun tip number one. What? So cute. All right, let's move on and do something else. Next, I wanna use swirling snowflakes, and I think this could be cute. So what I'm gonna do is get some ink blending happening here. So I've got some brand new inks that are part of the Simon Says Stamp. Positively Saturated Ink Collection. These were just released as a set of the new colors that are helping this whole line to just build and grow. And it's so exciting because the colors are fantastic. Here, let's zoom out just a little bit. There we go. I've got my little mat here so that hopefully I won't waste as much ink. Sometimes I tap off and I, well, you know, it is what it is. Someone gave me a great tip for using the mat. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just clean off my brush based on the last blue that I used. 
Okay, I don't know what it was, but I want to go a little lighter here. So I don't really clean the brushes in between use. And that is, well, that's fine. So here's what we're going to do. I guess we'll, yeah, maybe, can I turn it this way to blend? I can. I probably should blend on the larger mat, but I just like the mini because it fits in my space so well. So let's see. I just don't want to get my sleeves in the ink and you never know. I can't decide though if I'm just going to do random swirls or if I'm going to do light to dark. I think I'll do light to dark. I don't think I'm fancy enough to do uh, the random swirls. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to quickly ink blend this panel, right, with the blues. Maybe I'll keep it up there. Then I can pick up some of that ink and bring it into the paper. Someone said you can just pick it up and then you're not wasting it. And I thought that is so smart. I didn't even, I would not have even thought of that, right? Because you want to not have it come in too dark. But I think this is cute and this is really cool. All right, beautiful color too. Again, this is called marine. Now, let's get the next color, which is called cadet. Let's see there. Oh yeah, you can definitely see, right? That's a much darker sh shade, tone, color. And I'm gonna come in from the side on this one. I'm gonna cut this down a little bit, right? I don't want it to be this size of a panel, which is what I often do. I often cut my, oh, I guess I didn't need to do that. I can just pick it up from here. I often cut my panels down. I like to have a little more control after the fact. And I'm just gonna blend this up into the marine. I just get a nice blue, lovely feel to that, all right? I think that's pretty. And I want it to look, you know, it, it smooths out a bit when it dries. Well, let's go to this blue, which is royal. And this will be much bluer, of course, because it's a royal tone. Oh yeah, look at that. In fact, you know what? I'm going to flip it and I'm going to come in this way. Okay. Start at the bottom like that. And just blend it up. Ooh, that's a very deep, pretty color. Look at that. Bringing that in. Mm. Wouldn't that be a beautiful winter sky? Which is, I guess, I guess that's what I'm making, right? I, it would be because that's literally what you're making right now. All right. Bringing that in. And again, picking that up. Oh, that's pretty. That is so pretty. All right. And darken that a bit, the bottom, because I just haven't figured out what size it's going to be yet. We'll, we'll figure that out, all right? And then I'm going to come right back over here and pick up some more of that to do the little transition area like that. Now look at that. That is a really pretty panel. Isn't that nice? I tell you, if you struggle with ink blending, I'm going to tell you what, just keep practicing because when I started, I was terrible and I didn't think I would ever be able to do it. And it was really depressing at first. You can go back on my channel and watch some of the early years when it just wasn't as smooth for me. But now I just have more confidence and br brushes of any kind, they really do help. I've got one of my A2 layers dies here and I'm going to go ahead and cut this panel down. I wanna cut it before I emboss it because I don't like to smush out any of the detail from embossing. So if you're gonna cut your panel down, right, you should do it before so that you have your gorgeous panel trimmed and ready to go. I'm actually gonna grab my adhesive eraser. Sometimes my plates will push something in and it literally will come right up with an adhesive eraser, great tool. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Place that in here. Now, before I put this in, this is Nina Solar White Classic Crest in the 110 pound. It's a heavyweight cardstock. 
I'm gonna take my distress sprayer just over here to the side and I'm gonna spritz some water onto the back. I just wanna soften the fibers a little bit so that we don't get breakage. And I'll have this just sitting right here. You can, you can hear me do this in the background. Here we go, a couple spritzes like that. Then I'm gonna place it right here, close it up. And where's my cardstock paper? I'm gonna pop this on here. I don't know if I'm gonna need the cardstock though. You know what? I think I'm gonna roll the dice on this one and not do it. I can tell by feel. Oh, that feels pretty good. That feels good. It won't be too excessive, but we're gonna go back and forth a couple times. You know what? I may have wanted it, but let's just see how it looks. I still think it's gonna be beautiful. You can just experiment. Let's see how that, oh my goodness gracious, look at that. <gasps> I am so glad I didn't do the shim because look at that. I, I didn't expect it to look like this. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to die cut a greeting to finish out this card. I'm gonna create my card base here. Let's move some of these things out of the way. I'm just gonna put this on a white card base. This will be a top folding card. US A2 sized, which is four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. Okay, get that there. I am not going to do the shadow layer with the Joyful, but I did that with some of the matte, uh, matte silver cardstock and then just stacked two more underneath in white cardstock for some dimension. And look at that. I also have the tittle. Don't forget the tittle. Isn't that pretty? I love it so much. Okay, let's uh, let's get ready. And now when I went down the paper, it did help for it not to crack, but it did warp it a little, right? I And because I'm not gonna set this out and let it dry for the sake of time, I want to actually, I actually want to finish this video today. I just put the foam tape on in the hopes that it will, well, it doesn't, it does actually sort of flatten it out. Let me offset that a little so I can see. We're just gonna frame that out with the beautiful, I guess it's about a half inch of framing margin space and see how now it's all nice and flattened down because that foam tape holds it into place. Oh, so cute. I've got my connect glue here from Gina K Designs and we'll, I got a few bubbles. Come on bubbles, get, oh, I got a little much there. Well, it's, I'm getting, getting a little heavy handed. I could just do it the way Gina does. I love how she just smushes her finger, but I hate getting glue on my fingers. I know, I'm a crafter who doesn't like sticky hands. Oh, I think this is so pretty. Is it just me? Is it just me? Cause I, I don't know. I am feeling that right there. Look at that. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna take another brick here. I think we're, think we're centered. Press that down. And I'm going to pop the tittle right above I like to build these, yeah, where's my, well, can I use my jewel picker for this? Maybe, let's try this. Yeah, I like to build the dimension on the tittles just right onto whatever my project is because that is just, that's yeah, just too small. I guess you could consider this a boop, right? Because we're going boop like that. Yeah, and of course the shiny third layer Get you on there and add the shiny tittle. Boop. Just like that. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, pressing that down and letting it adhere. Now we could add some shine via, well, let's see, I've kind of been in this uh, phase where this is the one I'm going to most often. And why not? You know, it's a great, it's a great neutral confetti. Do you know what? I know I know the boop is fun, but I think this card, it's gonna stand on its own. So <laughs> you did hear the one, you know what I mean? Because look at this, I don't think that needs anything. And sometimes you have to walk, you have to back off from the boop. You know what I'm saying? Because look at that. How fun is that card project? What a gorgeous, gorgeous display. And I know a lot of people might think, well, why did you do the dark? I like this as the sky is at the top, you know, and it's nighttime and I don't know, I'm just so in love with that texture from that folder. I did not expect it to look that good. So that is a card project that I've shared today 
featuring the dry emboss. I don't think I'm gonna make a fourth one with holly branch. I might save that for another video because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I wanna do it. And sometimes I feel like when you've had two successful, three successful pieces, you know, you don't always wanna push your luck. So I hope this inspires you to take a look at 3D embossing folders, but keep in mind, if you have stencils in your stash, you can do the same effect by dry embossing whatever stencil pattern you have on. But I will tell you, the assortment of holiday designs that are out right now at Simon's Stamp are phenomenal. There are so many more than what I showed you today. So I hope you enjoyed this. You can find all of the links to the supplies that I used in today's video below in the information box. And I will see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.